Welcome back guys. Again, I am working on my 05 Forester and if you guys have been following me on social media, you may know that I'm having some overboosting problems. Ever since I did all this and put in the new turbo, I've been having overboosting issues. I got the check engine light in the front. I've been talking to a tuner because I want to get a tune, a professional tune, instead of the access port on these. And the first thing that he said was check the boost solenoid. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this one, cleaning it out and see if there's any leaks. So the first thing I'm going to do is take it out. And is this guy right back here, tucked away. And uh, it doesn't look too hard to get out. So first thing I'm going to do, obviously, unplug this little clip up here. And once that is done, I can go ahead and disconnect the bolt that's right in there, holding this thing on. And that bolt is going to be a 10 millimeter. It's actually a little nut that goes on top of there. But once you get that out, there's a second one. As you can see, there's bolts that go through here that are welded into place. And then on the other side, you have a nut. So you're gonna have to reach up in here and do the same thing with that 10 millimeter. All right, so I got both of those nuts off of there, and now this thing actually moves. You can possibly take it off, but um, you actually don't have enough room, something I just figured out, to actually get that off. I guess if you bent it enough, you could try to really get it out of there, but easiest way, I don't wanna break anything, is uh, just take this bracket off that's attached on here. So there is a, I guess you could do Phillips or probably a 10 millimeter on there. There's another one attached to over here. I think there's another one on the other side, but yeah, this bracket has to come off. There it is. I managed to get it out of the way. Uh, once you get those two off, this thing's pretty loose. Like I said, there is another one right down there. You can get it from the other side, but honestly, it's just like uh, this one up here, rubber grommet on there, so it gives it a little bit of a uh, leeway. So you got enough room to actually get this thing out of the way without taking that last one off. So now that I actually have this one off, you can see there are two vacuum lines on there. Once you pop those out, then I can take this whole thing out and uh, give it a nice little cleaning when I take it inside. And I'm also gonna test these vacuum lines. You can trace them. And uh, one of them goes up to the turbo over here. The other one goes over here, I'll show you, but you can test the vacuum on those lines to make sure there's no cracks or holes in the lines. Okay, so I fished out these two lines. You can see the lines trace over here. One of them, this is the, the one that goes into the T fitting to the turbo where the restrictor is. And this other one follows up in here and then up through the top, comes across here, and then right here into your intake. So you can follow all these lines where they connect into and make sure that there's nothing wrong with them, no splits, no holes. Um, looks like all my lines are pretty good. I'd have to start up the car and check the vacuum, but just by looking at them, they look fine. So I'm gonna grab the solenoid and make sure this thing's nice and clean and working properly before I do any extra steps that's gonna cost me some money. Here we are inside. So, if you do want to test this to make sure that the inside works, um, you can't really do a whole lot just spraying it as it is. It should hold vacuum just like this, so you won't be able to do anything on either side. So what you do need to do is get a battery source for the two terminals here. Preferably 12 volt, but I have a nine volt battery, which dollar store works totally fine. So I've got the negative and the positive hooked up. On a nine volt, it actually says, it's got a little plus there and a minus over there. So I've got it hooked up. That's just how I have it uh, hooked up. I can't put it the other way or else the the leads will fall off. And then I have the positive here and the negative, I use the one with the stripe. And when you do test this, I checked it out. If you're looking at it like this, where the clip is in the top, the right hand side is gonna be positive and the left hand side is gonna be negative. 
just so you don't get those mixed up. I went ahead and went to the car and checked the voltage reading off the plug. That's how it's supposed to go. So I'm gonna do the best I can to show you guys and hopefully you can hear what it sounds like with one hand. All right, so got the negative, and the positive like this. So they're gonna be hooked up perfectly. See if you can hear this thing open up and close. So there you go. Sounds like it's opening and closing just fine. Um, you can still spray some cleaner in there if it does work, but it looks like this is not my problem. If this is your problem, then while it's opened up, while the, um, the actual power is going through there and the valve is opened up, you can spray through on the inside, make sure that brake cleaner, or whatever you use gets through there and then just open it, close it, because these things are expensive. You might as well get an aftermarket one because these things are so expensive. A hundred to 150, depending on where you find these. Really, this is the best thing to do is to do it yourself to save some money. Sick. Well, that would be no fun if we just left it there. Let's take this thing apart. So on both sides, you're gonna have these two little things here, they look like a V. You're gonna have to squeeze those together so we can push them through. Um, I figured out how to get these started is with a flathead. I tried to use the needle nose, but they're too fat. So if we look up here, the best way to do this is to get that flathead and start that bending. So kind of wiggle it forward. Once you actually get it far enough, then you can use the needle nose pliers to squeeze them together. Now that the easy part is done, now we have to go to the hard part. Both sides, as you can see, are nice and straight. Now the hard part is getting these hooks off. Both sides are hooked onto the top portion that we're trying to get to here. But the bad part is they're going through the same thing, which is, I guess, a piece of this. So what we're gonna have to do is from here up, pry these pieces out. So I'm going to try to start from the top, right where my nail is, and pry it out. And hopefully that works. If not, then I'll try to stick something in between there. There's a little groove in there. Just basically try to get this thing out. This is actually a lot easier than I thought it was. This is um, some pretty soft metal. So you can see I've already got these bent up. All I did was just put my flathead right here and twist it. And these things start to come up. Let's see if I can get this other side. There we go. All right, now that's just getting them loose so you guys can see what I was doing, but already I can see this thing is getting loose so we can get in there and take a look. All right, as you guys can see, I've got all the little pins out. So we're gonna lift this up out of the way. And there we go. The inside is nothing up there, just a plastic piece. Then we have this very thin piece that comes out at the top. That's pretty cool. There's the bottom of it that goes over the spring that's inside here. Take the spring out. And then last but not least, we have this little piece of plastic, that guy right there. And that is everything on the inside. Mine looks absolutely clean. Um, the underside here you can see has a O-ring piece of rubber that goes all the way around. I guess there's a little bit here on the top side too. I don't know. Yeah, there's a little bit of a divot, but on the bottom side, I'm guessing that's where that piece seals up. 
I don't really know how this thing works, but that is what it looks like on the inside. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you haven't already, make sure you follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram so you can get some behind the scenes stuff that hasn't happened yet and unreleased content that no one else has seen. And if you haven't already, watch that video. And if you watch that video, watch that video. And if you've watched both of those videos already, make sure you subscribe down here. Yeah, watch this stuff. It's awesome. And if you've watched that and that and subscribed,